Hi, I'm Simon Murgatroyd and welcome to Ask the Archivist. I'm Alan Aikborn's archivist and I'm here to answer your questions about Alan Aikborn, his plays and his life. This week's question is, which of Alan Aikborn's plays have been withdrawn and why? Now, Alan has written 89 full-length plays and of them, nine have been withdrawn and are not allowed to be produced and have never been published. So this is a guide to those nine plays and why they've been withdrawn over the years. We begin with his first five plays. These are The Square Cat, Love After All, Dad's Tale, Standing Room Only and Christmas versus Mastermind. All five were withdrawn and haven't been published or produced since the 1960s. The reason they were withdrawn is because, as Alan has frequently pointed out, their plays written when he was first learning his craft are not necessarily of a quality one would want to see on stage again. They are the first steps in his career as a playwright, and whilst you can read them in situ in the Aikborn Archive at the Borthwick Institute for Archives at the University of York, Sir Alan wouldn't want them to be performed again. As Sir Alan's archivist, I would just add that whilst all the plays are interesting in showing the development of him as a writer, only one of them, Standing Room Only, is of a quality to be seen again. But then, this play was heavily revised after its world premiere and did receive a second production before it was withdrawn. It's a much more polished and mature piece of writing when compared to the other early withdrawn works. The next play, which is sandwiched between relatively speaking and how the other half loves, is The Sparrow, which premiered at Theatre in the Round at the Library Theatre Scarborough in 1967. The Sparrow was optioned for the West End and then never seen again. Its failure to find a West End production and some undeserved knockback against its writing led the play to be eventually withdrawn. It's actually not a bad play, and it also marked the professional acting debut of John Nettles. But it has a distinctly different feel to Alan's other works of this period, almost moving into a Pinteresque type territory. And this was not what his West End producer wanted. He wanted the next Relatively Speaking, and The Sparrow wasn't that. The playwright has often said it would have been interesting to see how The Sparrow would have fared had it received further productions, but it got lost between the success of Relatively Speaking and How the Other Half Loves, and is now largely forgotten. We then have, notoriously, the Andrew Lloyd Webber and Alan Aikbon musical Jeeves, which opened in 1975 in Bristol before an infamous and short-lived run in the West End. The musical was withdrawn soon afterwards for obvious reasons, not least that it was an over-ambitious and over-complicated attempt to adapt Woodhouse's Wooster and Jeeves novels for the stage. Twenty years later, it was completely revised and rewritten as By Jeeves, which was considerably more successful and is available to produce. But there's no chance the original Jeeves will ever reach the stage again. We then jump to the 90s and the family play, the musical Jigsaw play. This is a very obscure piece which premiered at the Stephen Joseph Theatre in the Round in Scarborough. This is a play specifically written for in-the-round performance and features a lot of interactivity as the audience helps a band to create a hit song to get them out of the limbo where failed pop bands go. Alan was never entirely happy with the play and cut it extensively during its initial run. It was a rarity of the time and it was never published and Alan confirmed in 2020 that it too had been withdrawn. And finally, we come to Virtual Reality, which premiered in the McCarthy at the Stephen Joseph Theatre in 2000, and is a rare example of a play written specifically for the end stage by Alan Aikborn. Virtual Reality centres on a group of largely unsympathetic friends whose relationships and friendships are devastated when one of them has a midlife crisis and an affair with a younger woman. The audience reaction was not terrible, but it was hardly great, and it was obviously no classic. 
The playwright himself was unhappy with the piece, and whilst noting that no one ever sets out to write an unsatisfactory piece of work, he realised, with hindsight, that is what had happened here. To that end, he even wrote to and apologised to the actors during the tour about the piece not meeting his expectations. Unlike some of Alan's plays, which have had unsatisfactory initial productions, but which Alan has then gone on to revise and have success with, he abandoned virtual reality. It was immediately withdrawn and has never been seen since. Many of its themes and ideas were reworked far more satisfactorily in the plays which followed, such as the Damsels in Distress trilogy. So that's the nine plays. Now, all of those are held in the Eight Barn Archive at the Borthwick Institute for Archives at the University of York. So although you can't see them and you're not allowed to produce them and they won't be published, you can research them and you can read them in situ if you go to the Borthwick Institute in York. I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching and for subscribing and I'll be back with more soon.